What is up everyone? Welcome back to another Mass Effect 2. Today we are continuing through on doing all of our little side missions. I'm really excited. They've been a lot of fun too. So let's jump into it. Okay, I wanted to start with this one. Save a crashing ship. There it is. Let's check out these other planets really quick. We have Jonas. A methane ammonia ice strand is being developed as a fuel depot serving as pilot's cluster. Edfell Ashland Energy has established a base on one of its moons to crack water ice into hydrogen and oxygen. The skim helium-3 from the atmosphere. Jonas is also believed to be an extrasolar capture by its star. From orbit, Normandy sensors can pick up, pick out a hand-painted sign some waggish employee has left outside the complex. Last chance fuel for a hundred light years. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Let's head here. MSV Broken Arrow scans the techno rapidly decaying derelict ship in the orbit over a planet Jonas. Registration matches the MSV Broken Arrow. Ship's manifest notes volatile munitions cargo on board. It felt it left undisturbed, the ship's trajectory will lead to impact with Jonas. High probability of the crash site will be far gone. Jonas is Largest human colony. Oof. Guest signature is detected aboard the MSV Broken Arrow. Well. Warning. Collision with the planet's surface is imminent. I am transmitting a countdown to advise you of the time remaining until impact. Time remaining until impact. I'm too. I can't do this. Oh. Oh God. There's a time limit. Okay. We can. We're not in the time here, right? <laughs> Yellow alert. I'm moving the ship to yellow alert. While we have no signs of trouble, I'm not sure we won't run into Geth this far out. We have tr we have to be prepared for anything. I've been told it's a terrible idea to go out this far into Geth territory, but these colonies need to defend themselves. Sometimes I think the only thing keeping the crew from shriveling up in fear is the hundred crates of military-grade weaponry on board. A little shore leave when we get to the nif near the Nairif system will do us all some good. We have a lot of deliveries to make and it's not going to get any friendlier out here. Red alert. Moving the ship to red alert. The Geth are attacking. We're ill-equipped for the attack on the, of this magnitude, but we'll do anything, we'll do everything we can to survive this. The colonies need these weapons and this attack is further proof of how dire the situation is out here. Signing off. This will be the last entry in this law. Given the severity of the Geth attack, I've ordered all hands to evacuate and head toward the colony. Should the Geth succeed in capturing the ship, they also gain control of the hundred crates of weapon in the cargo hold. Therefore, I'm using my authorization codes to scuttle the ship, hopefully destroying the Geth that remain on board. I intend to stay on aboard to make sure the ship dies gracefully. My plan is to disable the ship's engines, thus causing our orbit to decay. This will bring the MSV Broken Arrow down to the surface, where the self-destruct timer will destroy the ship. I must be careful. If I fail, there's no telling where the ship will end up. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Looks like we're going forward. Oh god. It's not the time for me to be having to open doors. Go. <laughs> Panic. Forget any of them. Yeah, out of here. It's fine. <laughs> Navigation status offline. Life support systems damaged. Hole breach detected. Local atmosphere. Um, engines to restore power. Re-engage the power couplings. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Cool, cool. Let me go grab this. I'm just doing that. Um, what's over here? There's something hiding in here. Ooh, radio. Okay. Anyways, back to the <laughs> the mission. We don't got time for this. Go, go, go. I don't know if I can go up there. Can't the yeah, I don't think I can. Oh, 
We're doing it this way. Found that one. He shoots those. He sh Did you see how fast those were? That was the fastest freaking missile I've ever seen in my life. We don't got time for this. <sighs> Interrupt. Why is it getting interrupted? Do I have to stand here or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep thinking they kept interrupting it. Why, why do I have to stand in front of it? Damn it. <laughs> They're making this harder than it needs to be. <laughs> yes, kill that one. Okay, well now where do we go? That way? Just have to drop down, I guess. Jesus, this one will not get off me. Can you guys shoot him, please? Engaging enemy down. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Oh, I can't even go this way. Damn it. What? Oh, where? Where am I going? Move. Overload deployed. Go, go, go. We don't got time for this. Ah! Okay, so they do interrupt it. I thought that I just had to stand there and take the brute hit. Okay, well now we know. Go back up here. Okay. Hit this. Um, great. <laughs> Bam. You guys are doing great. <laughs> oh, are we fine? <laughs> Screw the Gath, man. They are so annoying. That did it. Ugh, that was stressful. Rain and Gath have disengaged colonies safe. <laughs> it kept interrupting me. It makes me hard to feel bad for them at all. God. Because they're always a thorn in my side. Commander, you've received a new message Ooh, at your private hello. terminal. To the Normandy, our thanks. Governor of the Fargon Colony, Jonas. We retrieved your identity from the docking data aboard the MSV Broken Arrow. We've led to, we're led to believe that your crew is responsible for saving our colony from a catastrophic event. Not only did you defeat the Gath and prevent the ship from crashing into the planet in a trajectory that would have destroyed our colony, but you also saved nearly ten... 100 munitions crates that would have been lost in the ship's scuttling. Thanks to you, we are safe and can continue the Broken Arrow's work in arming the colonies on the fringe of the Geth space. On behalf of the residents of the Fargon Colony, you have our eternal gratitude. Cute. Another day, another ship saved. <laughs> okay. Well, that is done. I guess we can go here next. This is a big one. Wow. Crick, known for its spectacular geysers that can be seen from orbit. Wow. That's that's beautiful. It's in temperature range for human habitation. Making breathing masks or environmental suits mandatory. 
interesting. The most abundant resources for exploration are the potassium salt founds in its sea beds, which fetch good prices on terraforming worlds. Franklin. A large moon. Franklin retains a trace of atmospheric carbon dioxide, but its desolate surface holds no signs of water or life. In order to defend the Watson from pirates of the Terminus system, Franklin is home to two Alliance spaceports and naval base capable of fielding six fighter squadrons each and a classified number of interplanetary ballistic missiles. Mass effect fields keep the gravity in its installations at a comfortable level for long-term living. Let's go see what this... Oh. Probe. That doesn't sound too good. Scans detect an alliance colony defended by the Javelin MK2 missile base. A distress signal indicates that the base is comprised by Batarians who have launched two missiles at the alliance colony. Total destruction of the colony is imminent. Zero probability of survivors if missiles strike. Find a control panel in the Javelin MK2 missile base. Time of impact calculated. Landing party will have five minutes. Damn it! Why is it another <laughs> timed one? I'm stressed under the timed ones. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh god. We got five minutes. Five minutes to save the world. The there was a battle here. Oh yes, there was. Already on. That's not what I meant to do. That's not anything of what I wanted. Can't. <laughs> now. Bam. Well, he's dead now. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure he's right there. <laughs> Maybe I'm the crazy one. But, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Now's not the time to hide. Oh god. I didn't mean to do that. That's not what I meant to do! Damn it! <laughs> this is not the time. <laughs> to be messing up. <laughs> go, go, go. Ow! Jesus Christ. It takes so long to get undercover in time. Come over here, huh? You want some of this? Why can't we reach this? Oh, yes, you can, and you will. Tag him! Tag him! Damn it, Shepard, you are struggling today to just lock on. <laughs> oh. Where did you go? Oh, something went wrong. Die. Die, criminal scum. Get out of here. Where's my objective? Get ready to fight. How many more of them are there? Where am I supposed to be going? Where? either. Where am I going? Back down here. Oh, down here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, where am I supposed to be heading right now? I should have just gone straight here. But I thought it had to do with that giant missile. Oh. Shit. I cannot think right now <laughs> where all of these are. <laughs> I don't know why. 
I don't like being put under pressure. And that's every mission today. Has been me under pressure. Can I get a break for like two seconds and just do a calm mission? <laughs> that's all I want. Can't reach the target. Can't target them. Peek out a little. Can't get a lock. Why can't? <sighs> Die then. Why can't I target you? It makes zero sense. It makes no sense when I can't target. I don't understand. Shepard's struggling today. He hasn't been able to target anyone. What's the point of having your powers if you can't use them, Shepard? We haven't been able to use them pretty much at all. You sausage. Like, my god. <laughs> Just target on. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. Slowly. Oh! Only that, uh, what is this choice? <laughs> I can't do this mission. I'm over it. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Why can't I do both? Okay, let's let's see. Apply the kill switch to protect the alliance interests and tactical viability. I'll be at the cost of hundreds of lives in the city. Apply kill switch here to save the city and hundreds of lives with its industrial area destroyed. However, the colony will no longer be viable and will have to be evacuated. Oh God. I'm sorry, spaceport, but objective complete. That's awful. I did not like this mission. <laughs> I just feel bad. Screw you. I'm glad I killed you. All. That's what you all deserved. Ugh. Can we get a mission that's not stressful for like one second? My God. I was hoping this wouldn't be a stressful mission. <laughs> Tearing radicals from destroying colony in Franklin. Protected colony's residential core. Thousands of lives saved. <sighs> How about never again? That mission was a disaster because... First, Shepard won't charge. Then the game crashed. And then Shepard wouldn't charge. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> Watson is a known in human media for two things. It's spectacular tides brought by on by a large moon and the bureaucratic snafu over which Earth nations got to settle there first. Watson is a garden world first discovered in 2165 with credit claim to the Chinese People's Federation. The United North American States and European Union, the Systems Alliance broker the infamous R Rajavik Compromise. Allowing limited colonization from each coalition and cities compromise the populations from each nation. Watson itself tends to be colder than Earth, with a temperature zone measuring about 30 degrees latitude in either direction of the equator. Its life does not easily map to Earth's evolutionary era eras. Some islands have species that resemble terrestrial placental mammals, others are overrun by anthropods. It is estimated that at least two or more generations and xenozoologists will be needed to properly classify all the species on the planet. That's cute. Darwin is ironically named being one of the worst places for life in the galaxy. <laughs> its atmosphere is punishing, its temperature boiling, its chemical makeup toxic. Carbon monoxide and methane wrap the planet in an unyielding haze and scans its surface show only silicates and molten tin. Its daily thermal fluctuations lead to hurricane level vortices, two of each pole forming eyes that can be seen from orbit. Despite all this, Darwin is still used by spacers as a drive core discharge point. Hydrogen pierces in clouds in the upper atmosphere, making for a relatively benign approach. Wow, look how big it is. <laughs> With how close it is. It's a hot Jupiter wasp was originally a extrasolar planet that entered the system and was captured by the gravity well of the G-class star Skepsis, tidally locked, whilst its hot side reaches temperatures of over 2,500 degrees. While not large enough to, while not large enough proportionate to the star to cause eclipses visible from Watson, it is easily seen at dawn or dusk as one of the brightest objects in the sky. That is really cool. Thane gas giant Pauling's gravitational field is believed to have cleared most of what would otherwise have been a sizable asteroid belt. The 2163 mission of the space probe Ultimate gave inhabitants of Watson reams of data reinforcing this theory, giving the colonists an accurate count of its moons, 66 rings, moon-like ring objects, and 
more than 200 impact craters on the surface of the metallic core. Ultimate has been since retrieved for reuse on subsequent missions within the solar system. Oh, Camo Witz. Named for the 21st century pioneer of groundwater remediation techniques, Camo Witz is an impressive layer of ice over the stony metallic core. Despite its size, it only has one moon, Noah, which shares its carbonaceous comp composition, leading astronomers to believe it formed following a giant impact. Iridium deposits have attracted miners to the planet who must work through robots and telepresence because of the planet's strong gravity. Oh yeah, the, def the false signal. The reason we came here. I completely forgot. <laughs> I got distracted by other mission. Hopefully this one isn't on a time <laughs> limit. Please, give me a break. That's all I want. <laughs> to not be timed. Lyanna Cloaked is a methane clouded hothouse planet. It's lack of metal rich core. Magnosphere allows for easy scans. If we deduce that this mining occurred within the last five years, any longer the machines would have been worn down to nothing but excessive heat and dust storms of hot iron oxide. Sanctum is proof of an old spacer adage. Just because it's called a garden world doesn't mean it's a picnic. <laughs> Freezing ice storms cover the poles and temperature zones leaving a narrow strip of habitable land in the equator. Dry but windy, this area is home to Sanctum's minimal terrestrial plant life. The planet has yet to develop land-based animals, though invertebrates grow quite large in its pel pelagic seas. Mining, referring, referred to as ice cracking at anywhere but the equator, is a common employment on Sanctum. The planet is rich in platinum and palladium deposits, as well as boron, which is locally used in semiconductor doping. Travel advisory carbon dioxide levels in Sanctum can reach 5,000 per million. Piracy is at a 14-year global high in Sanctum. Visitors should take appropriate security measures. Okay, well. Check all those tunnels for runners. Report back to Captain Nerum when you're done. Check all those tunnels for runners. Report back to Captain Nerum when you're done. What's going on? The false signal, right? On our sensors. Distress, distress beacon detected on initial sweep is confirmed to be a fabrication set in place to lure unsuspecting ships into orbit for pirate ambush. Preliminary scans indicate that shutting down the false distress beacon will stop the Blue Sun's transmission and disable their ambush site. Surface scans show Blue Sun's communication signature is concentrated around a shuttle hangar bay. See, that's just rude. They're going to help and then they get punished for it. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Damn it. I want to land. <laughs> Look how pretty it is though, wow. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, you better run. Yeah, run away. Okay, we got this. At least there's not a time. Heads up. We've been spotted. <laughs> Yes. Ow. Can't reach the target. Can't just, target them. just, just, just target them, and they're right in front of you, Shepard. I can't with you today. I just cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> can't reach the target. He's all. He's only one foot in front of me. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with him today. It, they'll be right in front of him. He just can't do it. Get out there and take them out now. <laughs> You're not taking anything out. We're gonna come take you. Due to concerns over employee safety, the Broadfield Mining Facility has been closed until further notice. Weapons ready. Oh, but you can target this guy through a wall. I mean, I don't question, but I am questioning. <laughs> Get 
get back over. <laughs> You're not allowed on that side. <laughs> I don't know why I was coming back over. Um, where are we going? That way? Ooh. Due to Phillips' brilliant expansion of the northern mining tunnels into the mess hall last week, our small facility will be closing indefinitely. All teams will be transferred to the nearest starbase shortly. Hmm. Can I... Is this one too? No. It's in here. See, a lot less stressful now <laughs> when I don't have a timer. <laughs> I'm a lot less stressed. Hey, cousin, that jerk Selim just fired me for no reason. I swear the guy has it out for me. I hear the Blue Suns are hiring people to take out some dumbass vigilante on Omega. I'm gonna go show them how it's done. Wish me luck. <laughs> you probably die. <laughs> it's funny because I have Garrus here. <laughs> I think that makes it more funny. <laughs> Got anything to say to that, Garrus? I would love to know. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. Continue forward. I'm just gonna go straight in there. Lucky that that glass saved your life. <laughs> Why does he look so funny? <laughs> he landed on that so oddly. Your little drone's so cute, Tali. I love it. It distracts them. Is there anything here? No. No, that's also not what I want. Some iridium, nice. Even more. See, nice and peaceful. There's some fighting still, but we're not on a time limit. <laughs> Sure about that. Oh, oh, great. Oh, God. No, this is good. There we go. <laughs> None of that was good on uh, stuff. Behind cover. Probably a bad idea to bring Tali right there, but you know, we're there she goes. It's like the one time that they don't care about me. And there she goes. <laughs> I had a feeling it might have been a bad idea to do that. Like that woke me up. <laughs> My god. Why do you take so long to explode? Oh god. You want some of this? Huh? 
My name's Shepard. Yeah, fight that drone. Bam! I've got panic. God, it was strafing so well right there. Bam! <laughs> I love the little slow motion so much. Yay. <laughs> A wall safe. What do you have on you? God, those are so close together. <laughs> I almost pressed the other one. Nice. What? What are you hiding against? <laughs> what is there? Did not know where I was going for a second. <laughs> but now it does. It was a little confused for a while. It's over here. Client agent incoming. An agent from the prospective client arrived today. The client has asked for discretion, which raised a few red flags. On Commander Santiago's suggestion, I plan on I plan to persuade the agent to divulge the nature of the location of the cargo. Prothean artifact confirmed. Well, that didn't take long. The client agent folded under minimum pressure. Commander Santiago's hunch was correct. The client's hopes to hire us to move a Prothean artifact from the dig site. With a little more pressure, the agent should gladly give up the location of the dig site itself. Dig site location confirmed. It took some persuasion, but the agent gave up on the location of the dig site. I'm dispatching ships and men to the location now. Santiago ought to be pleased. The Prothean artifact is worth much more than we'd ever get transporting it. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder what it is. I hope we get to see it. Anything else over here? I think we're good. Vito's just being a pain in the butt, isn't he? He's like, yeah, we should have killed him. <laughs> we should have just ended it then. Let's turn it off. And look cool doing it. <laughs> that should do it. Look at that slow motion getting up. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Deactivated the stress beacon at Bruinfield Mining. I wonder... Maybe it was that one artifact we found before. Or CE. Garvuge was considered a bargain world, given to the Krogan to placate them because no one else wanted to live on such a frozen rock. Technically, a life-bearing world. Garvug was a small farm belt around its equator and a well-insulated marine life in its seas. By the turn of the century, Krogan had completely adapted, breeding hundreds of younglings per family in vast underground bunkers. By the turn of the next century, Garvug's narrow strip of coral reef had been destroyed by overfishing and pollutants. An excessive Krogan took to the stars to find another planet to consume. Garvug was treated as an object lesson by the Council Citadel Council. The Krogan should not be trusted to check their own numbers. Today, Garvug is a frozen wasteland, home to corporate eco-engineering efforts trying to implement sustainable agri- and aquaculture practices. Krogan and Vorcha packs are a constant threat, and corporations pay mercenaries well to keep their operations safe. Oh, damn. Launching probe. You have been claimed. On to Micah. Look how pretty this is. Wow. Ooh, look at that. It's gorgeous. Okay, we don't have the feel for this. <laughs> Getting distracted. Ooh. 
Oh, there's little asteroids. Oh! Cockabell. Second asteroid in the system formed around the element zero core. Cockabell is another carbonaceous asteroid with a surface made of hydrogen minerals such as carbonates and clays. The surface of the Cockabell is pitted and scarred with the strip mining stations where the Quarians took as much Ezo as possible before moving on. Does that mean it has nothing left? Israfil. Largest of the Ezo trio, Israfil is a silicate heavy carbonaceous asteroid. It is home to approximately 40 species of microorganisms in its liquid waters and was blamed for the source of the prion based bio warfare agent EHE, exotic humanoid encephalopathy, used by the terrorist group Tottenkopf in their attack on the Gargan station in 2184. While many scientific communities protested that Israfil did not have sufficient atmosphere or evolutionary history to sustain life at that at the prion level, the asteroid and its ESO miners were nevertheless quarantined to reassure the public that the system's alliance was taking action. There's no evidence that that has yet been found that EHE originated from Israfil or was even synthesized in its local lab. The SSV Manila and team of endemiologists maintain watch over the asteroid's ship traffic for now. Ma, home to 51 moons, including the prebiotic moon Anafel, Duma is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with violent surface winds exceeding 1900 kilometers per hour. Like its sister planet Elohi, it is believed to be an extrasolar capture. This one's cute though, it's pink. <laughs> Well, purple. <laughs> Elohi. Uh, the comet Asaro. Wait, Elohi will be in the site of a rare astronomical event later this year. The comet Asaro will come onto its orbit of 70 galactic standard years and travel so close that the giant to the giant that it's predicted to be captured by its moon. Dozens of space probes around the galaxy have been launched into Rahil system to record this moment. Elohi is within the frost line of its parent star, where the gas giants do not usually form. It is believed to be an extrasolar capture. A st statistically significant number of distress signals have come from the 1 million kilometer mark around Elohi. Pirates are believed to be working the area. In person tourism is not advised. Film one oh, still one missing. Is it you? No? It looked like one. Maybe over here? Oh, is that it? It is. Farlas, one of the trio asteroids formed around the element zero core. Farlas is the easiest to mine for low yield ESO carbonaceous asteroid. Farlas has trace water bearing minerals and organic carbon in the form of carrageen. Currently, the asteroid is surrounded by Aquarian mining ships extracting fuel for the flotilla. Guess. We haven't even been to this one at all <laughs> for anything. Or that one. Oh, we finished that one already. And then these two. Wow, we're almost done. Well, I guess we'll just go in order. <laughs> We've had a nice like path of the way that we're going. I like it. Shacha. Tassel Nim. The sister tragedy to the extinction event on Afras, Tosal Nim, was the rarest of jewels, a second garden planet within the same life zone of Afras. Not as old as its sister planet, its fossil evidence indicates it was home to abundant invertebrate li sea life. However, similar craters to those in the Afras created a dust shroud that killed 99% of biota on the planet. The, ev the even spacing of the craters indicates a coordinated, simultaneous attack from points around the globe rather than an asteroid collision or super, vo super volcanic scenario. Sadaban is the largest dense planet named for its volus god of punishment. Its crust is rich in uranium, eroded by winds to create large radioactive dust storms across its surface. The volus of Talisphia have explored the planet thoroughly with the space probes and telepresent robo mining machines and discovered they are not the first to exploit the planet. Plastics from mining stations approximately 50,000 years old can be found near the planet's equator. Curiously, the mines nearby were not tapped out of uranium ore. They were instead abandoned at the height of their operation. Interesting, right? Launching hmm. probe. 
I have found something. Scans show a crude base establishment on the planet's surface. Communications match known blood pack mercenary protocols. Numerous life signs matching Vorcha geonology detected the base materials. Base's materials resource match our data on the weapon manufacturing components. Time to take it out. <laughs> Cute little landing spot. I am detecting a large power source inside the base. It is probable that destroying it would disrupt the entire facility. Sounds like a plan to me. Kalus, you'll get resources when they're good and ready. You want to come mine these rocks yourselves? Everything will be ready for the attack. If you'd gotten me the additional vorch I asked for, it wouldn't have been done by now. Salamul. There's always problem within their ranks. That's what I've noticed. How can you trust anyone when they're always trying to do something? <laughs> By where they have all these problems. Kalusk, I'm sending back two of the Vorchi you sent me so that you can see what I'm dealing with out here. I suggest you not arm these morons. These piss poor shots are most likely to blast the broad side of your one of your generators and hit their intended targets. Maybe once you understand what I'm dealing with, you won't be so quick to mock me when I ask for some goddamn assistance. They are not getting along. Any other data pads for me to read? I gotta know. Incoming. There. Yes. Off the ledge. Yeah, you weren't supposed to die from that. This should take the heat off. <laughs> yes, perfect. Good job, Jacob. Damn it, he didn't fall off. <laughs> I really wanted him to fall off. That's a bad idea. Get out of here. Target down. Oh, nice. Jacob just got hit so hard by that. Oh, yes, you can. You. I was reading data pads about you. Oh, how did I dodge that? Ten out of ten aim. <laughs> it looked like he shot that and <laughs> he killed himself. What happened? We all good? I'd like to examine this further. Would you? What are you examining? The Vorcha? So I guess am I shooting these? I mean, it's probably excessive to use this. <laughs> Bought my hand then instead. Time to go. It sounds like a plan to me. Go, go, go! Everyone, get out of here! <laughs> we can use this. Hell yeah. Dimash Blood Pack Weapons Production Facility. Decimated Blood Pack Vorchus Soldiers. Incredible. <laughs>
discovery and frost is a heavenly twin a planet in a star system that has not one but two worlds of sufficient mass to retain a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere within the habitable life zone of its parent star fossil evidence shows abundant vertebrates and evidence of sapient terrestrial avian species in, a, in its bronze age however the only trace of contemporary life on the planet is that of a single-celled organism in its seas. Olas have su suffered from an extinction event, a series of massive impacts that vaporized vast quantities of water and lofted dust into its atmosphere, just like everywhere else. Early theories of this event was a collision with a fragmented asteroid that has now been discounted. The impact craters were aimed directly at habitation centers. Oh yeah, I have, I have an idea of what it might be. That was terrible. <laughs> Vem Asuka, the weeping witness in Empyrean Volus, a low-density hydrogen helium with 35 moons. Later this year, 33 of the moons will be visible from the planet's surface in a conjunction, an event that will be recorded by space probes from all over the galaxy. That'd be really cool to see. Bovis Tor, the Shining Sea in Old Volus language. This is Old Volus, it's so cute. Bovis Tor is the name for the boiling surface rich in glowing hot alumina. Flecked with dark ridges of carbon, its thick atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen is no indicator of life since the temperature is simply too high. Talus Fia is a planet capable of supporting life if that life happens to breathe ammonia. <laughs> okay, <laughs> discovered by the Asari explorers, the planet was used as a bargaining chip by the Citadel Council, who quickly drafted a colonization agreement with its wealthy client race, the Volus. The Council would fund the Volus colonization efforts in return for massive trade benefits. With uncharacteristic enthusiasm, an enormous Volus influx ensued, and the Council reaped the economic benefits for a dozen years before the colonization bubble burst. Today, the economic good times on Talisphia are long gone, and modern Volus businesses are cutthroat operations. Piracy is a grave threat to shipping as well as armed criminals. See the Volus as prey. The poor Volus. Whenever I talk to a Volus, they, for some reason, they remind me, I cannot remember the character's name, but a character in the uh, animated movie Atlantis, the one he, like, does all the digging, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he, he, he like, runs the, the mining thing, I can barely remember that movie, but for some reason, they remind me of him. <laughs> Doze atop, Sky Warden, has a bluish tinge from its hydrogen methane atmosphere, its axle tilt causes seasons to vary widely in temperature. And it's also a pretty blue. It is all Volus area. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, the Shrike Abyssal is done. I guess we should finish these two, huh? I never finished Ilium. It'd be interesting to finish Ilium because it's a sorry space, right? Pretty sure all of it is. I don't know if it's just this, but we shall see. We have Mysooth, is a red dwarf. My dwarf Mysooth has attracted no interest beyond the cursory flyby by automated probes in 1874. We have Zesmeni, attracted development by Asari mining concerns that service military industries. There are significant loads of valuable light metals present, including titanium and lithium. Titanium is the primary material used in mass accelerator slugs. The lithium is used on the military-grade droplet heat radiators used above warships. It contains only 28% of its mass. It is a trace atmosphere of neon and molecular nitrogen. While Asaria has a core of heavy metals, the bulk of the planet's volume consists of water, ice, several unique forms of long-chain carbon mole molecules have been recovered on the surface, pushed up from beneath the ice by cryovolcanic process. Asaria is a large rocky moon, compo compositionally similar to Luna. Interesting. To disable the blood pack relay. Think there's anything hiding in this asteroid belt. Jontin, close orbiting peg side gas giant, orbiting the star Lucarn at a high velocity with temperatures of a thousand degrees. Analysis of the orbit has revealed a core of heavy elements with a mass double of that of the planet's hydrogen helium atmosphere. Untanta, 
is remarkably close to Earth. Its orbital distance is similar, while it's slightly larger, its reduced density yields similar mass, atmospheric pressure, and gravity. There are similarities, and for Lucerne, is a hot class F star emitting over eight times the energy of Sol. Untan un Untanta is a parched wasteland. Its water long since boiled away into its nitrogen carbon dioxide atmosphere. A handful of mining outposts dot the hellishly hot surface. Crew remains an underground bunker, sending remotely controlled machines out at night to do surface work and load cargo for shipment. While the planet is too close to Lasarn for its condensed and fall as rain, this makes the environment too hostile for forms of life more sophisticated than bacteria to evolve. Ooh, look, a pretty purple one. Exetic. The common methane ammonia gas giant Exetic is best known for its infamous Calthor camp. Established on ice moons of Gasus, Calthor was a Blue Sun's hostile environment training facility run by cadre of former Batarian Special Intervention Unit operators. In 2168, a cluster-wide scandal broke out when it was revealed that the morality rate of recruits sent to the camp might be as high as 18%. Investigation by Asari authorities based on Ilium un undercovered uncovered group of graves around the facility containing the remains of several hundred recruits dating back to two decades. The camp was immediately closed and the remains sent back to the worlds of origin. An inquest by the Blue Suns found that Batarian commandos had used harsh training methods, but these were consistent with their own training to join the SIU. The Batarians were exonerated. Though Calthor was shut down, they were reassigned to other units. As the Crescent Nebula is beyond the sphere of the Council Law, no civil charges could be filed against the Blue Suns. Wow. Talk about shit tea. Why would you ever want to join it? I don't understand. Tarth is a broadly Earth-like with a fatal flaw. It has relatively high amounts of chlorine in its atmosphere, and the reason the greenish haze that becomes apparent when looking at the horizon. Chlorine has become a vital component in Tarth's plant life as a dense mechanism against native herbivores. Many species evolved the ability to release clouds of toxic chlorine when disturbed. The gas is heavier than the atmospheric oxygen and tends to settle in low places. While avoidable, this place Tarnath near the bottom of the, of the list for colonization, their intermittent signals originating in the heat in the heart of the large chlorine swamp. They appear to be coded, though it is not impossible that they are garbled distress signals from drowned civilian ships. You never know what hit you in a second. <laughs> Preliminary scans indicate a high-powered communications relay on the planet. Communications match known blood pack mercenary protocols. A concentration of Krogan and Vorcha signals are massed inside what appears to be a mining operation. Life signs detected. Unknown species advise caution. Unknown species? Oh god. <laughs> Oh god. You know, I think we should leave. <laughs> the fog on the planet's surface is interfering with your navigation. The nearby beacon towers may serve as a navigational contingency. Nearby beacon towers, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Are we gonna have to fight that thing? <laughs> I'm a little worried. What happened here? Hmm. Problematic. Attention all workers, stop chipping away at this node. There's nothing left here to mine. Move on to the other sites now. Solomon, oh my god, Solomon. Yeah. Get the beacon. So we go that way. I see. Toxin concentrations exceeding safe levels. Proceeding with caution. Great. It is kind of hard to see, but at least we got that to... Ooh, God. Headed for combat. God, you are tanky. Ow. <laughs> My God. Oh, we're going that way. 
But what's over here? Raw materials, nice. I can just picture Shepard with a little pickaxe. <laughs> just hammering away really quick. Oh god. This is a different way we could have gone. To the right. Oh god, you scared me. No. Can't reach, the target. Uh. reach it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh god, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Every single time. I'm gonna need more ammo soon, though. Why were they here? Let's find out. Attention all workers, fall back now. Evacuation shuttles are on the way. Anyone not at the gathering site when the shuttles arrive will be left here with those damned bugs. Signs of recent fighting. Oh, yeah, they're probably fighting the <laughs> terrifying bugs. Front, where'd you go? Where's everyone? Where'd everyone go? <laughs> Why do I feel all alone? Hostiles. Are we fighting that? The large bugs. <sighs> Salamu, I can't get any more Vorcha from Omega. Garm is, has his own problems. You're going to have to man up and deal with this on your own. Maybe build a beacon path. I bet those damned Vorcha are just wandering off into the fog and getting lost. Can I reach that from here? <laughs> Why would you ever want to be here? Well. Hey, where's this? Oh, I see. Okay. What's over here then? Oh, it's just a light. Okay, I guess we go up here then. Even with the <laughs> I'm still lost. <laughs> Grunts like this way. I already knew which way to go. Okay. go down here. Hmm. Get ready. Yep, I hear them. There's 
to that way. What's up here then? <laughs> Man, I'm gonna get so lost. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> you guys guarding that palladium? <laughs> they were just chilling up here. Grunt keeps going ahead. <laughs> Grunt just wants to get this mission over with, apparently. <laughs> Grunt, where'd you go? I can't... I can't find you. Okay, we're almost there. Get out of this fog. At least it's not as foggy right here. It did say that it's on the lower parts more. Sounds like they're fighting up there. <laughs> I guess we'll just do this. Classified hostile alien species, eliminated blood pack forces. They kind of look like the Rachni, but maybe descendants of the Rachni. Galon is surrounded by an extensive ring system. The inner rings are composed of pulverized nano manufactured carbon materials, thought to be the remains of an Artheni helium 3 mining infrastructure. The few pieces of large debris found indicate a materials technology at least equal to the current galactic state of the art. The outer ring consists of water, ice, silicate dust, and an odd bit of rock. Analysis of the debris often shows shock damage and evidence of rapid heating. Some parahistorical theorists insist that the outer rings represent debris from a moon or moon destroyed by mass accelerator bombardment. This has been rejected by every reputable xenoarchaeologist. While it is theoretically possible to destroy a small moon, Utterly with dreadnought bombardment, no species sees a compelling reason to do so, except one! <laughs> uh, no. Epco is a rocky world, obviously from hyper-velocity kinetic impactors stretching between these locations are the shattered remains of magnetic leviathan rail lines, which strongly suggest that the craters represent the former locations of Artheni mining outposts or other settlements. Settlements. The equ equatorial region contains an extensive network of canyons formed by the planet's abundant liquid water. Atmosphere is approximately 41 carbon dioxide. At sea level, there is four to six times that necessary to render most species unconscious within a few minutes of breathing it. Breathing masks must be worn at all times. The Terminator is a thin band of nearly habitable terrain. Unfortunately, the local biosphere is based on chlorinated oxygen atmosphere. It is not sophisticated, but it has proven highly dangerous. The Asari surveyor Viralis landed on Nefima in 1684 to study the local ecology. Unbeknownst to the crew, a handful of native chlorine fixed fixing microbes passed through the biohazard screening and entered the ship. The Viralis returned to the port of Nos Parnalo on Ilium, where the Nef the Nepiman microbes escaped onto a temperature environment with plentiful unused chlorine. The microbes developed, devoured the chlorides in the earth as me metabolic pi byproducts. They produced toxic polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, 
By the time the infestation was contained, an area of nearly 30 square kilometers had been effectively turned into a toxic waste dump. Nas Parnalo had to be abandoned, accelerating the development of Nas Astra. Interesting. So originally, <laughs> there was going to be Nas Panarlo, but because of that, that would be something that would happen too. Imagine what you discover on all these other planets that you don't even know what you could be bringing back. Probably wipe out civilizations. I have detected an anomaly. Halim is a post garden world that was once that once enjoyed an Earth-like oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere. It is bl still blessed with plentiful water, but generally cold climate. Halim is thought to be the home world of a Arthen, a spacefaring species which disappeared approximately 300,000 years ago. Precisely what happened to Halim is still under debate. It appears a global extinction occurred, wiping out all native animal life forms more complex than zooplankton. Plan plant forms were not affected, but the lack of oxygen breathing life caused oxygenation of the atmosphere. Plant life was reduced after lightning storms ignited global wildfires. The leading theory of Halim's devastation is the out of control biological weapon. For this reason, landing is strictly prohibited. The corporations of Ilium have in place a network of quarantine satellites to dissuade would be looters from landing on this crumbling sittings. Detectors in orbit. All units report to ready stations for possible anti invasion protocol. Repeat, unidentified ship detected. Launching probe. That's a on our sensors. Mercenary activity detected inside of mining facility on the planet's surface. Facility confirmed registered to Edfell Ashland Energy Corporation. Eclipse president presence is confirmed. Stress beacon powered down at site. Sensors detect multiple spacefaring vessels. Launches from facility. Let's go take a look. Here we go. You two ready? On a mission we go. Oh god. The bugs. <laughs> they are here too. Cargo computer. So it wants us to go that way. Eldfell Ashland Energy Corporatic. Shipping log. Cargo ship to Allen. Docked and received a large shipment of resources en route to a facility in the Dranic system. Turn Allen requested escort for the shipment, claiming pirate activity along the route. Hmm. We've heard a lot of Eshland, the Eshland Company, <laughs> on our travels through the galaxy. Oh! Ow! 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 ow stop it! Done. Engaging hostile. Engage this. <laughs> the way she did a cartwheel was very elegant. <laughs> Well, it wants us to go that way, so I'm gonna go this way. Oop. Let's see what's going on around here. My spies opening doors. My least favorite. <laughs> Alert, we are under mercenary attack. Escort civilians to crew quarters and then return to work area to protect the main computer at all costs. Hmm. The main computer, you say? Are we gonna hack into the mainframe? That was so disorienting. How do we end up over there? <laughs> Wee. 
Right here. I see. Is this the main computer that they were talking about? I almost pressed that. <laughs> Thinking it was the right one. Shipping log. Cargo ship to Alan docked and received a large shipment en route. Yep. Location of last report from Ta'alan encrypted. Ooh, I can decrypt it though. You hear that though? Can't get a How far can I reach? Oh wow. Get out of here. Just nothing to help. Stop it. <laughs> Let me just thank you. Don't mind. Mind me. over matter. <laughs> well, now your mind is all over the floor. Warp that. So I shot the wrong person. There's so many by you. I'm coming to help. You're toast. Oh, God. You're dead. Oh, God. Quickly, kill one of them. I I shot the box behind him. <laughs> now how did that happen? Is that everything? Oh, decryption complete. Let's go take a look. That went well, I guess. <laughs> sometimes it goes really well, sometimes it goes horrible. It's all dependent on whether Shepard can lock on usually. And I'm not sitting there like a goose. Further details are required to trace the Ta'alan's location. The data has been sent to the servers to further analysis. Ooh. Um, oh. Oh, we're done. I wanted to check what was over here really quick. If there was anything over here. Nope. Nothing. This is the return to Normandy. Guess we're heading out. See if they can get that decryption and locate the ship. Recovered data referring to the Turlon's location where decryption needed. Interesting name. Murky Water, despite the name, Murky Water has yet to show any signs of having water whatsoever. Its name is a literal translation from the original Hanar who considered Murky Water a sign of danger. Murky Water has a ha hazy, crushing atmosphere of carbon dioxide and methane which brings the surface heat to boiling levels. It remains unexploited, its gravity temperature too high to bother. Ooh, green. First land. First Land is home to many space stations supporting the ubiquitous refueling platforms. The thriving community of Drell and Hanar make their homes in orbit here. 
giving the solar system's rover, robo miners somewhere to go when the 50 hour days and nights are driving them mad. Jeez. Fitful current. These are all interesting names because they're all from the Hanar. I really like that. It's named because of its orbits in retrograde, indicating that it may have been an extrasolar planet that was captured by relic system's gravity. Large for a rocky rock planet, fitful current has only traces of hydrogen in its extremely thin atmosphere. Hanar Robo Miners have recovered some uranium thorium deposits within its depths. Island Wind. Island Wind is named for the sweet smelling land breezes that come off the arch the archipelagos of Kaje in the evening. As tumultuous as any other Huvian giant, Islands Winds has cyclones that span tens of thousands of kilometers. Cute. We have some outer ones. Ooh, wow. You are so pretty. Praying Mouth is a ship killing en enigma. The Bermuda Triangle of the Terminus System, there are many theories why ships never return from there. Undetectable space debris, old disruptor, torpedoes, and magnetic mines from long-forgotten wars, even miniature black holes. But what is clear is that too many ships have been lost there for it to be happenstance. There's a large number of ships lost while attempting to discharge their drive cores and praying mouth. The Relic System highly recommends using First Land's complimentary discharge stations instead. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> I'm, I'd be okay not, not going into that one. Beach Thunder lives and dies off the price of titanium metal being the only reason to come to this frozen rock. A best-selling e-novel, The Hard Stuff, has popularized the story of the miners on the planet. It follows the Hanar, the Hanar and the Drell Robo Miners competing with the Krogan and the Vorcha, who simply put on environmental suits and lace the titanium out more or less by hand. As the novel's promotional screed says, Accidents are frequent, rivalry is fierce, and vengeance screwed, served up fast. Interesting. Beach Thunder. I'm guessing there is some... Yeah, I see one right there, actually. So tiny. Rough Tide. <laughs> I like that they all have, you know, water <laughs> in the name. Um, Rough Tide was named when large veins of platinum and palladium were stuck on the miners from all over the clusters came in to stake their claims. Hanar police and their drill enforcers clashed with Krogan and Vorcha in an ugly series of race riots in the late 2170s, and the planet has only grudgingly kept a shaky peace since then. Ooh. The Hanar did not get along. Oh, well, that was... It's cute. I like when the whole area is a certain area and they have the names to to kind of coincide with that. It's really adorable. <laughs> Nath. Cold and dry, Nath has a thin nitrogen atmosphere, vast salt flats in its equator, warm enough for liquid to pool during the summer period. Revealed salt is collected and sold to sodium poor planets for agriculture purposes. During the Anhar Re rebellions, Nath was a staging ground for eclipse ships and was, site was the site of their first defeat when enemy Nashet Nah Nahesit surprised the route and routed them with a superior force some wreckage from the battle can still be found on the planet today translation error status of system operator is not known general distress another general distress i have found something wreckage of a merchant freighter configuration unknown damage to ship catastrophic detecting movement but no signs of organic life a sandstorm is approaching from the northwest. Proceed with caution. A sandstorm? Oh god. Wants me to go that way. What's over here, though? It sounds like we're in battle. This is a really open area. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> System status report. Engineering. 
Engineering status compromised. Catastrophic damage to primary and secondary cores. Element zero exposure. Levels critical. Fuel leaks throughout the engineering deck. Navigation critical. VI control locked out by executive command. Authorization crats. Short uh, sensors compromised. Short range sensors offline. Unsafe planetary proximity detected at 0700 hours. Life support compromised. Returning to safe levels. VI control locked out by executive command. So someone. Captain Kratz. Oh, God. Was that you? Oh, wait, that's not a dead person. I thought that was a dead person. <laughs> shields. Normal. Shields holding at 100% integrity. No shield breaches detected. VI network compromised. Potential contagion. VI control of critical systems locked out by executive command. Ooh. Damage to communications array critical. Activating distress beacon. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. Navigator's log. Captain, short range sensors just went offline and I'm locked out of helm control. The VI is reporting malfunctions all over the ship. Hmm. Oh, what's that? I saw something. Oh, it was this. Evacuation order. Attention all hands. We are on a collision course and losing systems fast. Report to the escape pods immediately. This is not a drill. Jesus. Well, they definitely crashed hard, that's for sure. But why? Shipping manifest, MSV Corisca. Cors Corsica. Reflective mech armor. 14 crates of reflective mech armor. Loki mechs. So they just went all rogue and pretty much took down the ship. Well, I guess we're gonna be dealing with them now, aren't we? Yep, there. I was switching my guns, I was doing everything, I was trying to charge at the same time. I was trying to do too much all at once. <laughs> and it did not end too well. Well, you did jump in front of me. Never stop firing. No, that one. Maybe I should just go in there. Try to kill this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will. Damn it. Yeah. I knew I was gonna do that. Just kill him, damn it, I've been waiting. I wanted to wait so I could just go in. <laughs> they just keep shooting him instead. Ow! Nice. <laughs> I'll take it though. It was gone. Trouble ahead. Taking them out. What then? Nice. Okay, well, I'm guessing that. Oh yeah, it's getting pretty- oh, there's more. I guess we just leave them. Come on, we need to leave. Yeah. Probably never end if we don't leave anyways. Goodbye. I wonder if they got out. The escape pod's fine. Found no survivors of the MSV Kariska wreckage. They activated the stress beacon. Man, that sucks for them. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Is it for the... Oh, Chris, good last known docking coordinates. Information acquired. Location coordinates. Jarahi Station. Starbo System Equal Nebula. Data mining confirms that the last reported location of merchant freighter MSV Kariska as the Jarahi Station. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Possibility exists that clues pertaining to the anomaly that caused the mass malfunction of the mechs aboard the Koriska can be found aboard the Jarahe station. Damn, they found that fast. What about the other one, though? <laughs> well, you couldn't find the other one as fast? <laughs> I'm still waiting for that one. Sobek. Sobek's low-G moons were sites of a many Bartarian labor camps during the and her rebellions. Generating raw materials for the war, when the slaves were finally liberated from the Eclipse, the mercenaries found abysmal conditions, including whole camps that lacked mass effect fields to keep the gravity at habitable levels. Widespread bone loss among the slaves was part of their master's final degradation. It would cripple them as if they were left for the st standard gravity world. The plight of the slaves soon garnered galactic media attention and several charities sprang up to pay for their physical therapy and find them gainful employment. Eclipse mo normally re reveled for their cutthroat tactics and criminal employees found themselves painted as heroes. The mercenary company still retains an office on Sobek's moon, Hepit, out of nostalgia as much, of, as much as a business strategy. Interesting. That is odd. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> The Ezo rich planet of Anhol. <laughs> Garn with heavy populations of humans and Vatarians, Anher was home to one of the ugliest violations of sapient rights in modern human history. A consortium of corporations and corporate and corrupt politicians fearing Vatarian economic competition due to their custom of legal slavery passed a resolution that abolished the minimum wage, effectively re legalizing slavery on human dominated world. Opponents of the motion quickly turned to activism and violence. A civil war erupted as one side sought to end slavery throughout the system and another primarily Batarian faction called the Naheset sought to keep the slaves they had. The Anna rebellions raged from 2176 to 2178. The Nahist had a significant advantage in ships, labor, and weapons, forcing and her militia to hire mercenary companies to even out the odds. In the end, the, abolition the abolitionists won out, though the cost of much of their infrastructure. Though Anner's today still has significant nature, natural wealth, it is economically depressed, save for the, save for the reconstruction industry. 
Sekhmet was the site of an important battle in the Anar Rebellions when the Eclipse mercenary company sought to capture the refueling station to deny the rebels' supplies. A fighter wing hiding in Sekhmet's ring ambushed them. Eclipse suffered heavy initial losses but destroyed two rebel carriers and forced them to retreat into FTL. This was considered a high water mark on the rebellion. At no point after the Battle of Sekhmet did the rebels have a victory. Fast and its moon served as Eclipse Mercenary Company's fallback position after the defeat on Nath. Once they gathered their strength, they leaked a false position onto the Na Heist Consortium to lure them into a trap, which devo devolved into a pitched battle. Both sides claimed victory. Na Heist lost more ships, but could afford the setback in a way Eclipse could not. Flet. Flet is home to the Blood Pack's Vorcha training and breeding grounds. The thick atmosphere is nearly all nitrogen and lacks oxygen, which poses no hazard to the Vorcha. Needing little but imports of food and water, Vorcha mercenaries and mercenaries to be trained religiously to overpower and kill whoever the company is at war with this time. Flet's spaceports are wholly owned subsidiaries of the Blood Pack Mercenary Company, a corporation undergoing numerous criminal investigations for capital crimes. Are we really surprised? <laughs> Anything new, using, um, using his gas giant close enough to its orange sun that none of its moons are considered habitable. Its composition is largely hydrogen and methane, with traces of xenon that the Krogan collect for the use in iron ion drives. Uzin is well within the frost line where gas giants usually don't form. It was probably an extrasolar capture. <laughs> Um, if so, this would indicate seriously unstable orbit, and the planet may plunge into its stars within a few million years. Oh. Rill. Rill is a notable for its near-miss climate, punishing heat and thin toxic methane, methane, ethane atmosphere. Its surface is dotted with Krogan and Vorcha habitats, eking out a meager living off of the planet's tin and copper deposits and killing anyone who cuts into their profit. Krogan can survive in the heat with the use of breathing masks. All other species require environmental suits to avoid heat exhaustion and burns. Liquid water can be found in large lakes on the surface. This can be used for thermoregulation, but it is not potable without processing. Large-scale gang warfare is regular occurrence on rail. Civilian travel is not advised. Wow. I'll be on my way then. <laughs> Investigate, 50%. investigate the abandoned station, which I'm pretty excited for, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Antigar. Charted by a Salarian mining expedition that went off course due to its computer error, Antigar is a hydrogen helium gas giant with 11 known moons and dusty rings, and also a very cute color. Here we go, the Jarahi Station. Data mining confirmed that the last reported location of the merchant freighter MSV Corsica as the Jarahi station in the Starbo system possibly exists that clues pertaining to the anomaly that caused the mass malfunction of mechs aboard. Yeah, I'm curious of what happened. Let's go check it out. Oh god. I have a feeling whatever happened there happened here as well. Escape the Juraha State. I'm trying to wait, but now we're escaping? <laughs> Locked by station VI. We've been trapped in here. <laughs> what is going on? Can I go through this? No. Dr. Goldwind. At my suggestion, we have cut power to all systems, save critical life support, in hopes of disabling these systems with will deny the VI the resources she needs to kill us. This is a temporary solution. We cannot last this out on our own. Dr. Tailson. Oh god, rogue VI. I wonder what happened. What made it go rogue? Oh. Docking area power restored. Oh, nice. Intruders are oh, yeah. requested to 
report to the cargo doors for immediate removal from station. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I'll be on my way. We both know what happened now. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. Are you mad? Dr. Goldwyn, my firm belief is that the VI is paranoid about the possibility of infection. Its current homicidal behavior is likely out of an inflated desire to keep us from shutting it down. I believe the VI is malfunctioning and that it believes our equipment to be infected by a virus. If we continue to try to shut her down, she will keep trying to destroy us. Maybe our only resource is to just do nothing and convince her that we're not a threat. You know, there's been, a, throughout the Mass Effect 1 and 2 now, there's been a lot of VIs that have, you know, gained their own consciousness. And I feel like there should be some some laws on this. Because <laughs> now I feel bad. Like, what about Edie? I feel like Edie's alive to me. I feel like I've always thought that. Power outage detected in the station. Mainframe is locked for down for security purposes. In research lab or living quarters. Let's go to living quarters. Attention all dock personnel, we're expecting a shipment of mech parts from the Hana Kadar facility on Kapek. Make sure the VI knows to accept the docking request from the freighter MSV Korska. Kennings. No. This is not the right way, good. This is a pretty big ship. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> One door enabled. Three doors enabled. Two doors enabled. Five doors enabled. Oh. Well, okay. Oh, personal locker. Nice. I'll be taking all of that. So, where does it want me to go? That way? But what's in here? Plasma venting in progress. Attempting to reach the maintenance controls will most likely result in serious injury or death. Both died. Okay, guys, hold on. All attempts to decontaminate station have failed. Require more power to escalate defenses. Maintenance area power restored. Nice. <laughs> Come back to life, guys. I had a feeling they might not have made it through that. Then, well, shit. Um, let's go back down. Well, now we have power. You have been identified as a hostile intruder. Is that so? Kennings, I'm positive the trouble with our VI started when the Korska docked with us. Tailson is looking into the VI itself. In the meantime, I need you to go through the logs and find everything, find out everything that was on that ship. What's happening in here? 
Research area power restored. Beam engaged. Testing area has been locked down according to protocol M29-2. Hmm. Oh. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Interesting. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Where's this one? Reflective armor prototype repositioned. I see. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Never mind, I did that wrong. Reflective armor prototype repositioned. Hmm. I guess we reflective armor prototype repositioned. What's wrong one? Reflective armor prototype Dang. repositioned. Stop talking. <laughs> Let me just work. Testing attention oh, all person reflective armor prototype repositioned. But you cut yourself off, damn it. I don't even know what you said now. <laughs> My god. Did it have to tell me every single time? Are you trying to annoy me? Huh? Well, we broke that. Hub area power restored. Let's see Central what's going on. Frame access granted. Docked vessel detected. Attempting to upload central programming into docked vessel's mainframe. Oh god. That is not good. I'm sorry. Intruder detected. You are not authorized to be in this area. This is a secure zone. Please leave this station immediately. I regret to inform you that all attempts to defend the station have failed. Shutting down security protocols. Aww. I feel kind of bad though. She was just scared. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Planet information. Quebec Haskin System Titan Nebula. Data from the quarantine VI of Jiraha Station indicates that a possible source of the VI virus outbreak is a Hanhei Kadar facility on the planet Quebec. Coordinates have been downloaded into the galaxy map. Ooh. I'm gonna go there right away. Um... Interesting. Has affected mechs and mech parts all over the sector. Stopping the production line is key to ending the outbreak. Aww. But I feel bad. Disable infected production line in the Titan Nebula. Ooh, I haven't been to this nebula before. At all. Was it always here? Am I crazy? Oh, it's tiny. It must be new. <laughs> I swear I've never seen this before. I have detected an Capec. anomaly. Baked in the fierce heat of the white sun, Capec is a rocky, waterless world wrapped in a haze of hydrogen and ethane sulfur and iron give the yellowish and black tinges too much of the planet's surface no registered settlements appear in the records though there are clearly metallic anomalies that indicate roofed structures the experimental mechanics facility is under quarantine for your safety do not dock with or land in the vicinity of the facility without the proper protocols and authorizations in place be warned the probe away 
I have found something. Surface scans detect a mech production facility matching the registration parameters of the Hane Kadar Corporation. Facility reports emergency lockdown at this location. Personal scans report no living beings detected. Hazard scans show a large number of virus infected mechs quarantined within the facility. Deactivation of the primary production line controls should disrupt the creation of additional infected mechs. Time to go down. Shut down factory. I have a feeling we're gonna be dealing with a lot of mechs in this one. Just a, a feeling. Incoming. Mech incoming. Feel the blood ray. Ow. Can't target them. I was out of it. <laughs> charging time. Excuse me. <laughs> Did it just say excuse me? Excuse me? How dare you hit me? <laughs> How dare I hit you? You're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll leave. Ooh. Oh. How you doing? Whoa! <laughs> Outgoing message log. Gianna Talarasan. Recall notice. Our circuit board supplier has an issue with immediate recall, which has been found to cause systematic breakdown of associated components. We've begun the search for a new supplier in the meantime, discontinue the use until further notice. No response. Just an FYI, we lost contact with the MSV Koriska. After you expressed concern, I checked the logs and indeed the mechs and parts they picked up contain the recalled OPUs. We know the Koriska was headed for the Jiraha station in the Starbo system, but we can't seem to contact them. I hope they're okay, but I think we've done all we can do at this point. Emergency situation in progress. I'm getting reports of mechs coming off of our production lines and assaulting workers. Some of them seem to be self-destructing at random. Even units not initially installed with the facility OPU are showing signs of viral infection. We're looking at a potential facility-wide catastrophe here. We are containing this the best we can, but we can't keep this up suppress this suppressed much longer. When Dr. Rochelle learns about this, heads will roll. Mine will not be one of them. Chief Saunders, security. Dr. Rochelle is ordered to a complete lockdown. You are hereby ordered to seal the production line access corridor and the rest of the facility. I realize that doing this will seal me and any workers who do remain inside with the malfunctioning mechs. This does not affect your orders. It has been an honor to work with- Oh, that's so sad. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I couldn't be here sooner to help. Man. Oh. Could you guys lock someone in? Oh, that'd be so hard. Could you see so anyone sad. else here? No, they're piled dead. Keith Gamble, security. Dr. Tullerson. I've located the Asari, Dr. Tullerson. In the production line access corridor, we've set up a barricade and disabled access to the rest of the corridor. Chief, I secure Dr. Tullerson. I'm heading into the warehouse to access the production line control room. I'll update you once we're in. I'm in the warehouse. It seems pretty empty. Sir, I can see the control room just above the storage area. I might need a few minutes, but I'm pretty sure I can get to the main production line. Shut down. Sadly, I don't think he made it. They've seen us. Ow. Go away. Let me pick up this element zero. <laughs> Ow. Take it a lot. Stupid railing. <laughs> Assist, 
can't reach the wall. Can't reach. Oh my god, we're probably gonna die, aren't we? Ah, oh, thank god it let me do it right then. Sound drums out, it hurts my ears <laughs> so much. Can't get oh, nice. But you guys are just never ending, aren't you? My god. Ow! <laughs> you had to do that. They are definitely rampant in here. Thank you. Requesting assistance. Requesting assistance. I think we have made it through. It reminds me of that one mission in ME1 where it's just a million husks hiding around corners. <laughs> but this time it's Max. I feel like husks are way worse than Max though. <laughs> That's for sure. Is there anything down here? Excuse me. I will take that. It's only 175, but you know. Better than nothing. line shut down well we made it I'm sorry that you could not but we have redeemed if I can find <laughs> the last piece there we go <laughs> goodbye malfunctioning mechs Now's our chance to get out quick. Shutdown of the Hane Kadar Experimental Mech Mechanics Facility production line on Kapek deactivated all infected mechs. I have detected an anomaly. Oh. Aquitas, home to the famous Iron Canyons, Aquitas has reddish iron oxide dust covering most of its surface. Significant blue cobalt deposits that freckle the terrain. Turian explorers have discovered hot springs and polar ice caps. Heated by magma in the planet's crust, in a strange combination of science and husketerism, a small facility exports water from these springs, which is boiled and sold as having medicinal properties. The funds are then used to maintain a research station that has discovered some fossil evidence that Aquitas once harbored microscopic life based on deoxyribonulic acid in these springs. Hmm. Universal distress protocol. Unregistered user or record damaged. Status is not known. Payload launched. Interesting. Scans have found something. Service scans report potential alien signatures from within the mining facility. Anonymous life signs detected. Whereabouts of facility staff unknown. Well, let's let's go. <laughs> it's a 
a wee bit windy. Oh, God. No. No, I, when I read Huskatarians, I didn't mean that we were talking about husks. I hate husks with a passion. Oh, God. Get ready. Ooh, container. Thank you. Something strange has happened to the mining facility on Aquitus. Whatever happened is either chased off or killed the facility's staff. Oh, God. Or they're turned into husks. I don't know. Which one is it? My greatest. They've anything. seen us. You're reading this. Get the hell out of this place now. <laughs> you know, I would be I'd be okay with that and let's go. I don't want to be here either. <laughs> Anything to do with husks mortifies me. Especially when they fall out of the ceilings. Go for the legs, man. Honestly, it's pretty good. Are you like an enhanced husk? Abomination. Ow. You wanna fucking go, huh? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, that's what I thought, huh? Yeah, you wanna go too? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it don't mess with me. I'll be taking that. Abominations. Oh, I'm out of ammo. I just wanted the iridium. <laughs> be taking this. It is now mine. Thank you. Doop -a -doop -a -ba -doop -a -ba -boop. Hostile! Oh god. <laughs> For the abomination quick. Nice. What's that noise? <sighs> Foreman Lawrence, mine logs. Smithman's men dug out some kind of alien machine today, like nothing I'd ever seen. Called up some of my contacts and found out there's a market for this kind of thing. Looks like some squints over at Alienus Risk Control are willing to part with a ton of credits to get their hands on one of these things. Far be it from me to deny them any chance to pay me. A strange glow. Cooper and Jorgensen say they saw a damned alien thing glowing and hell if I'm going near it to prove them wrong. I don't get paid enough to expose myself to weird alien artifacts. I have to admit though, it's awfully pretty sound coming from that back room. All I hear is screaming, so... <laughs> Cooper and Jorgensen and them ain't doing so well. Not feeling so good myself either. Stay near the machine. Feel better. Not sure if I want to let them Alienus folk take it. I think I should stay right here with us. Oh.
sounds like a plan. Go for the legs. I think Miranda won that battle. go so low are they am i super tall or something because that's what it's starting to feel like because <laughs> i have to aim so far down it it's so odd let me get miranda back in here can't last much longer nice i don't know what you did but that looked pretty cool looked offended. <laughs> Can't get <a> <laughs> oh yeah, that's definitely the way to do it right there. go so far like I can't even aim that low half the time in time before they've smacked me <laughs> they're like ducking all my shots get out of here Okay, is that all of them? That was an excessive amount. How many people did you have in this mining place? A million? Am I about to die? I thought that time was froze during that. Yes, please, Trevor, just press the button. That's all I want. Go! Oh! I can't get out of this freaking corner to save my life. Raping so well. Can't. can't reach the target. Yes, you can. We can do this. We just gotta work together. Hostile. 
Do I want to do that? Ow. Oh, I thought that was for the objective. <laughs> I'm gonna do it on this one. Oh! Oh, it was for it. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was never ending. I just need to get out of there. <laughs> I don't think it was going to end anytime this soon. Destroyed Reaper indoctrination device. That makes sense. That does make sense. Mm. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> That's why he was so intrigued by it, why he wanted to keep it. The others probably thought it was a Prothean technology. <sighs> Paytas. Combination of features make terraforming a possibility. The rights of the planet have been tied up in council, Citadel Council courts for the past eight years. The running joke is that by the time the council finally gives the go-ahead to colonize the planet, Paytas will have evolved life on its own. Home to comfortable temperatures and a mild atmosphere and mostly nitrogen and argon, Paytas could be a habitable with uh, the addition of oxygen producing cyanobacteria. The crust is high in silicates and carbon, allowing for easy fabrication of construction materials. Smugglers, pirates, and other unregistered starships sometimes touch down on Paytas to lay low or make repairs. Civilian travel is not advised. Veer. Pressure cooker planet. Ignored by the galactic community. Crust of nickel and scorched carbon. Far lesser temperatures. Veer. Cestus. I've always liked Cestus. <laughs> I used to call it Castus. I don't know which is correct. I don't know. I'll never know. <laughs> Timarurus. Invisible. Visible in, in, in Invictus's night sky is Timarurus. Is, is Timarurus. I don't know. <laughs> A planet named for the Turian spirit said to have inspired the crew of their first manned moon launch. Boiling hot rock planet Timarurus is much hotter than temperatures than its temperature neighbor due to thick atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide and helium. Its hot surface is largely composed of boron. Surrounded by thick dust clouds, Tamaruus is often stuck by metal, struck by uh, small meteors, making exploration dangerous. Bam. Launching probe. Mine. Claimed. Invictus. Home to the dextroamino acid based life Invictus temperature zones were settled by a Turian population that initially fell prey to the bewildering number of diseases. Two decades later, after its first colony was founded, its population had reduced by half due to its fatalities and large colonists' exodus. But when Primarchs considered uh, ceding the planet to robo-mining interests, the Turian statesman Shastina Empress ambitiously declared that she would start her own colony and double its population within five years. This effort succeeded largely due to the colony's location in desert and minimal number of pest species. The image of Shastina's triumph in the frontier made for a good political theater, and Turian population poured in. The planet's tropical belt remains largely unexplored, as its aggressive organic life still wreaks havoc on Turian biology. A house in an Invictus jungle is a modern Turian phrase for the idea that seems like a good idea, but only to the one who came up with it. <laughs> Invictus atmosphere is primarily nitrogen and oxygen, and its surface crust varies but as high concentrations of alumina. Because it can support life easily, criminals from throughout the Terminus system hide out in, on Invictus. Its official population is estimated to be half the number of sapiens that are actually on the planet.